That was the sound of popular beach combo M People's 1993 song, Moving On Up. It was used by the Prime Minister to rouse the hall before the big speech. But unfortunately, the PM then went on to resoundingly lose the general election. Oh, Andrew Marr, how can you say that? That's in the future. That is still all to play for. No, it isn't. The same anthem was used by Liz Truss in Birmingham today to the fury of its creators was also used by Gordon Brown in 2008. Mixing politics and music rarely goes well. But on to the speech itself. The first thing that any new leader has to do is to introduce themselves, not perhaps as they really are, but as they would like the country to see them. In a notably girl power passage, Liz Truss did pretty well except for one embarrassing howler. And I stand here today as the first Prime Minister of our country to have gone to a comprehensive school. Very striking, but not true. Put to one side the various Labour Prime Ministers who were state educated, what about Liz Truss's recent Tory predecessor as female Prime Minister, Theresa May? She attended the Wheatley Park Comprehensive School in Oxfordshire in the 1970s. Now, I know the Conservative Party is moving fast, but it's a bit early to forget entirely about Theresa May, isn't it? Not that Boris Johnson was mentioned once either, or any earlier Tory Prime Minister. The recent Tory years are part, it seems, of the story of low growth and low ambition. We cannot have any more drift and delay at this vital time. And indeed, at around this vital time, Greenpeace gave the Prime Minister just what her speech needed, a jolt of energy in a fracking protest by two young women. Liz Truss dealt with the interruption perfectly well and then moved on to what was, for me, the most persuasive part of her speech, an explanation of why that abstract word growth matters so much in the real world. I know what it's like to live somewhere that isn't feeling the benefits of economic growth. I grew up in Paisley and in Leeds in the 80s and 90s. I've seen the boarded up shops I've seen people left with no hope turning to drugs. I've seen families struggling to put food on the table. Low growth isn't just numbers on a spreadsheet. Low growth means lower wages, fewer opportunities, and less money to spend on the things that make life better. Now, for some reason, I don't fully understand. Most prime ministerships become associated with some kind of food or condiment. Harold Wilson and H.P. Sauce, John Major and Pease, the guacamole jokes of the Tony Blair era, Boris Johnson and cake. Irritatingly to my ear, Liz Truss keeps talking about pies and growing pies. And for too long, the political debate has been dominated by the argument about how we distribute a limited economic pie. Instead, we need to grow the pie so that everyone gets a bigger slice. Only a metaphor, but unfortunate then that only yesterday the British pork pie company Vale of Mowbray went into administration with a loss of 171 jobs, blaming energy costs and the difficulty of recruitment for baking pies. This was a speech with no new announcements, no new rhetoric, no new arguments. Truss did spend time, as she has all week, talking about the hugely expensive and essential package of measures to keep fuel bills down over the next two years. Our response to the energy crisis was the biggest part of our mini-budget. It was the biggest part for a good reason, because we had to do it. This reflected frustration that Kwasi Kwarteng's politically disastrous 45p tax cut had completely overshadowed the much bigger emergency support announcement. But tr in truth, governments don't really tend to get a lot of credit for something that they patently and obviously have to do. This was a huge announcement, but there was no choice. 
Philosophically, the kernel of the speech was Liz Truss's strong belief in smaller government, a less interventionist state, and of course, the energy intervention goes straight against that. But I thought there was a wider confusion here. For instance, on the one hand, government is bad and stifles free enterprise. On the other, when it's things she knows that people want, such as super-fast fo- super broadband, you can't leave it to the market, and the state apparently has to step in. We will build roads, rail, energy and broadband quicker. We will be proudly pro-growth, pro-aspiration and pro-enterprise. That is how we will forge ahead on our long-term path to national success. This speech didn't identify or resolve any of the real political arguments still dividing the Conservative Party, but instead it will be remembered for the clarity and the gusto with which Liz Truss identified her many enemies. I will not allow the anti-growth coalition to hold us back. Labour, the Lib Dems, the SNP, the militant unions, the vested interests dressed up as think tanks, the talking heads, the Brexit deniers, Extinction Rebellion and some of the people we had in the hall earlier. The fact is... They prefer protesting to doing. They prefer talking on Twitter to taking tough decisions. They taxi from North London townhouses to the BBC studio to dismiss anyone challenging the status quo. From broadcast to podcast, they peddle the same old answers. It's always more taxes, more regulation and more meddling. Wrong, wrong, wrong. I suppose the only problem is that if you add together the supporters of the opposition parties, the trade unions, environmentalists and everyone who's against Brexit, you end up with a pretty hefty slice of the country on the other side of the argument. And to put it delicately, that seems to be the picture the opinion polls are painting right now. Entrepreneurial-minded people are probably already designing anti-growth coalition T-shirts. This speech wasn't a disaster. No letters fell off the set. Liz Truss didn't mangle her words and she sounded on balance as if she really meant it. But it didn't move the dial. It didn't make anything better either. And right now for the Conservatives, that is a big problem. Yes, there's probably more than two years still to go before an election, but for a governing party, this has been a miserable, divided and deeply worrying week.